まあ Now all this wrong that we have done throughout our life and the sacred month of Ramadan is that opportunity when we get to cleanse ourselves, purify ourselves, clean ourselves. Rasulullah says that you burdened yourself with all that wrong that you have, com- you have committed. It says in this sacred month of Ramadan, this atmosphere of the sacred month, it is such that it will ease you, it will clear you, and all that wrong that you have done, it will be waived and forgiven. So do your best, seek forgiveness, ask Allah to forgive you, repentance in this sacred month. فَخَفِّفُوا anha بِرَطُولِ سُجُودِكُمْ And that says, this burden that is on your back, that is all that wrong that you have committed, ease it, remove it, how? By performing sajdas in this sacred month. And again, if you look into the riwayat that we have in one of these ahadiths of Qudsiya, the Almighty, he says that the best act which he loves from a, from a servant is that when he is in such time. 
At the moment he is in sajda, that is that beautiful act which Allah loves, and he loves to see his servant in sajda. And says that, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَقْسَمَ بِعِزَّتِهِ أَنْ لَا يُعَذِّبَ الْمُصَلِّينَ وَالسَّاجِدِينَ وَأَنْ لَا يُرَوِّعَهُمْ بِالنَّافِ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسِ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And that says, Allah, the Lord, the Ta'ala, He has sworn an oath. He says that He will not punish someone who has bowed down in sajda, who has stood, for, stood in worship for prayers. And this month of Ramadan is the month of worship, month of, month of prayers, month of sajdas, and do that as much as it is possible. And then, when it, in the next phase of the same khutbah, Rasulullah emphasizes on the iftar which is provided for Mu'min. Now, from all the sponsors of iftar, today, yesterday, and the day before, may Allah accept from each one of them the qabul and hasan all the hajat, whatever they are, be granted, inshaAllah. Here it says that, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ مَنْ فَطَّرَ مِنْكُمْ سَائِمًا مُؤْمِنًا فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ says, if one of you helps in, in breaking the fast of another mu'min, that is by providing iftar, كَانَ لَهُ بِذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عِدْقُ مَسَنَةٍ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ لِمَا مَضَى مِنْ it is equal to freeing a slave. That is, if you provide a car for just one person, it's like freeing a slave. And then says that all the wrong that you have done will be forgiven, all that wrong will be waived. And then someone present in that majlis when Rasulullah was delivering that khutbah, he said, Ya Rasulullah, there are many of among us who haven't got that ability. We are uh, not that uh, wealthy enough to provide iftar for everyone. And then, فَلَيْسَ كُلَّنَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكْ فَقَالُ إِتَّقُ النَّارُ وَلَوْ بِشَرْقِتَ الْوَعْتَنِ Rasulullah says that fear that fire in the year after, at least by giving a date, just one piece of date will free you from that fire, will free that, and will be, all that reward will be given to you. وَاتَّقُ النَّارُ وَلَوْ بِشَرْقِتَ الْمِنَا مِنْمَاءُ Says, even if you don't have that ability to give that one date says a sip of water to a moment so that he opens his fast that also possesses that same reward. So providing iftar in the sacred month of Ramadan, it has that great reward. And then Rasulullah says, nas man hassana minkum fi shahr khulu abu kana lahu jawazan ala sirat. Now this again is another teaching to us, to myself first, and that is, he says that in this sacred month, in addition to all the worships that you perform, to all those fasts, recitation of Quran, sajdas, etc., says improve yourself, improve your character. If there are shortfalls in it, if you find that there are things that you need to correct in them, correct them. And says that he had a shahkun khan, and someone who corrects himself in this sacred month, Rasulullah, he says that he will be granted the permit to pass from that sirat in the hereafter. And the definition of the sirat we find in our riwayat, in our teaching, it says that it's so thin, thinner than a hair, sharper than a sword, and we have to pass from that bridge. That is from Qiyama to the heavens. And Rasulullah says that if you perfect your attitude in this sacred month, you will be granted the permit to cross that bridge which will lead you to the heavens. So it is a tough situation. Quoting from Marhum Ayatullah, Shaykh Ali Shirazi, he is the Ustad of Marhum Shaheed Mutahari. Marhum Shaheed Mutahari says that when I was standing in home, a young student at that time, and I wanted to study Nahj al And for that we found, we just looked and, uh, and searched for the best of teachers, we found no one in Qum. The only person who could teach us that Nahj al was someone living in Isfahan, about three hours drive from Qum. He says that we went 
and we found him, he is a very knowledgeable scholar, a very knowledgeable person, and whatever he teaches, no one else is a match to him. Becomes his mentor. And he says that one day, this great mentor of his comes to deliver the lecture, ascends the member, the pulpit, and then, instead of delivering his dust, he starts crying, crying a lot. Now students were all amazed that why is that instead of him teaching today, he is weeping, he is crying. And then he says, I saw my death today. And then the Ustad says that whatever we were taught, whatever we are told, whatever has been mentioned in Quran and Rivaya re regarding the life after death is haq. And then he says that I saw myself, I died and my body is being taken to my grave to be laid to rest. And then, when my body is by the grave, I see a huge, big, black dog present over there. And then when I was buried, this dog also was to be, uh, was to be my companion in the grave. He says that I was shocked, horrified at seeing the scene that my associate and my companion is going to be this big, black dog. He says that I sought refuge in Abbaab, the Nabi Hussain, and said, Imam, help me from this horror. And then Imam, he helps. And then he was told that, you know what that black dog was? He says, once in a while he used to lose his temper. Once in a while he used to lose his temper, as a result of which, that was this aman of his, that action of his, which had taken that form. Now when I say lose his temper for that great personality, it's not like us. They are very delicate people, very great big personalities. Losing temper for them, it's, it's very mild. Says that for that action of his, that dog was to be his companion and his associate, that is for losing that temper. Over here, Rasulullah says that there are lots of wrong in us, and the best way to correct them is the sacred month of Ramadan. As the good we do in this is multiplied by infinity, the wrong that we do also is the same. And at the same time says that if you do have wrong on yourself, that will be shed, that will be waived, and that will be forgiven in the sacred month of Ramadan. So says that if you correct yourself, you correct your character in this sacred month, you will be granted the permit to pass over that bridge which will lead you to the heaven in the hereafter. And that says, وَمَنْ خَفَّفَ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ أَمَّا مَلَكَتْ يَمِينُهُ خَفَّفَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ حِسَابَهُ وَمَنْ كَفَّ فِيهِ شَرَّهُ كَفَّ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَذَبَهُ يَوْمُ يَلْقَاهُ وَمَنْ أَكْرَمَ فِيهِ يَتِيمًا أَكْرَمَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمُ يَلْقَاهُ says that if there is wrong that is on you, if you try to ease it, remove it from yourself, Allah will also be easy with you when He meets you. And be compassionate to the orphans, to the aytam, yateen, in this sacred month. And Allah also will be kareem, will be benevolent to you when He meets you. So all these are beautiful teachings that we find for the sacred month of Ramadan. And then says, وَمَنْ أَكْثَرَ فِيهِ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيَّا سَقَّلَ اللَّهُ مِيزَانَهُ يَوْمَ تَخِفُّ الْمَوَاسِينَ Says in this sacred month of Ramadan, recite salawat upon me, that is the Prophet, a lot. And then says, if you do that, your performance report, it will be heavy. As a result of which, your amal also will be heavy and you will be granted a very better share in the year after. There is a hadith which says that on the day of judgment when Rasulullah will be by the balance, by the mizan. Balance is that scale of balance wherein the amal will be placed, the good and the bad of every person. And the instructions given to Malik, Malik is the gatekeeper of the hell. Instructions given to him are that when the performance report of Mu'mineen, of him of my creation, will be placed in that balance, if you find it heavy, you will be, that person should be assigned the heaven. And if it is light, then hell has to be assigned to that person. 
Malik says that I saw a person come by the balance, he places his amal, his performance report, and according to the instructions given to him, the hell is awarded to him. And there Rasulullah is by the balance, by the mizan. He takes out an envelope from his pocket and places that envelope onto the balance, onto that scale. And now it becomes heavy. Malik says, the instructions given to me, if it's heavy, heaven, if it's light, hell. The person who was destined, the hell is now being sent to the heaven. And then he asks, what was that envelope, Ya Rasulullah, which you placed in this mizan, in, on the scale, as a result of which this person ended up into the heaven? He says, that is, the Prophet says, that these salawats that we recite, which is Allahumma Sallam, that we recite upon Rasulullah and his progeny, they are credited into a special account, and that account is with Rasulullah. And on the day when we will be in need, he will pay them back to us, that is, on the day of judgment. So recite salawats a lot in this sacred month. The reward of that also multiplies as it is the special season that we are in. And then says, وَمَنْ تَلَا فِيهِ آيَةً مِنَ الْقُرْآنَ كَانَ لَهُ مِثْلَ أَجْرِ مَنْ خَتَمَ الْقُرْآنَ فِي غَيْرِهِ Again, emphasis on the recitation of Quran. Rasulullah says, someone who recites just one ayah in the month of Ramadan, it is equal to the recitation of one entire whole Quran outside the month of Ramadan. So one ayah has that miraculous reward in this month. Fi <laughs> says the doors of the heaven are open for you in this month. Rabbakum and la says that you ask your, your mighty Allah that these doors that are open for you are never shut, are never closed for you. And then says the doors of the fire, the hell, they are closed. And ask Allah, they are never opened for you. So it is a beautiful month, a beautiful opportunity that has knocked our doors and we have to benefit from that a lot. And then Rasulullah says, Shaitan, all forms of Shaitan in the sacred month they are they are encaged, they are chained. And so that too again is another opportunity that is given to us so that we could work hard and become better persons in the sacred month of Ramadan. This is the khutbah that was delivered by Rasulullah in the sacred month of Ramadan as just a reminder as it was mentioned yesterday and day before yesterday that things that are to be observed in the sacred month that is when we are fasting, be sincere uh, in every action that we do in the sacred month and then when it comes to iftar it is mustahab that we break our fast with a date and then it is mustahab, you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before you open your fast. It is even more recommended that you recite Surah Al-Qadr before you open your fast. And there is this dua which says, Allahumma laka sumtu wa ala rizmik ya aftartu wa alayka tawakkaltu. Say that and then break your fast. And again, riwayat, they say that among those spots, among those places where du'as are accepted, it is this time when you open your fast. No matter what hajat, what wish and desire you may be having, at the time of breaking and opening your fast, have that wish and desire in mind and then open your fast, and inshallah, all that you want will be granted. And then, again, when you break your fast, do it with something which is halal. That is, whatever we consume, it has to be halal, tayyib, tahir, clean, pure. And then one more thing that we have to observe is regarding the suhoor, that is when we want to start our fast, when we uh, have our, our suhoor before we, um, before we close our fast and then start the day. 
Sometimes people, they don't eat anything. It is recommended that you have to eat something you know, at the time of Sahar. Rasulullah, he says that at least a piece of dinner. Or a sip of water, but do drink or eat something before you start your fast. And again, again, this whole month of Ramadan, it is a full program. That is, you find that there are du'as that are to be recited during the day, you find du'as that are to be recited during the night, and you have du'as that are to be recited before Fajr. And it is a full program. So whatever you fancy, whatever you like, do it as much as you can. So these, again, du'as we find in that way, in the sacred month, recitation of Quran as much as you can. And then, with reference to the recitation of Quran, our fifth Imam Baqir alayhi salatu he says that everything that you see, it has a spring. And the spring season for the month of, for this holy Quran is the month of Ramadan. So recite Quran as much as you can. When it comes to observing these fasts, now people who cannot fast for whatever reason, if it's for medical reasons, or if it's the old age, or if they are traveling, the month of Ramadan, it has its own hurma, it has its own sanctity. It shouldn't be as such that if a person is not fasting, he openly eats and drinks as he was eating and drinking, when it was not the sacred month. So that's how eating and drinking also has to be controlled. Don't keep it into the sides so that others see and they also are tempted to eat and drink. That sanctity of this month has to be observed, even though if we are ill or traveling and we cannot observe the fast. Now, what about in extreme weathers? Now, I don't think any one of us has that criteria. Now, if they, there are someone, some people who are working in extreme weathers and they cannot observe the fast, it is not as such that they can break it and they don't fast. They can't do that. Even if the weathers are extreme, they have to observe the fast, they have to, and if they don't, that compound kafara will apply onto them. Now for these people who are working in extreme circumstances, or someone who feels ill and he cannot really observe that day's fast due to extreme weathers, it is permitted for him to drink a sip of water. Now this is only for someone who is working in those extreme weathers. So that day when he has uh, taken that sip of water just to uh, protect himself from knocking down. Again, does it mean that his fast is over and he can eat and drink? He cannot. That day's fast is gone. He will have to make it up later on. The only thing which is uh, over here is that that kafara does not apply to this person who is dehydrated and who cannot fast. So that is again irrelevant to us. Using of brushes, toothbrushes, mouthwashes, and while a person is fasting, that is permitted so long as it doesn't enter the throat. And as I mentioned yesterday, throat is that area wherein the letter Kh is pronounced. If you do use a chewing gum, or if you do use a toothbrush or brush your teeth or mouthwash, and if it enters your throat, it doesn't invalidate, but if it enters the middle of the throat from where the letter Kha is pronounced, that would invalidate your fast. So be careful that even if you are using these mouthwashes or brushing your teeth, nothing enters the middle of your throat. May Allah Taala help us in the sacred month of Ramadan, and may He give us the opportunity to witness, to perceive Laylatul Qadr, and may Allah Jalla make it as such that the Imam of time is pleased by our performance, all the wrong that we have done, may all that be forgiven. May Allah give us the opportunity to recite Quran in the sacred month and to be good to each other and all the wrong that is present in our Allah and our characters, all that be corrected in the sacred month. May Allah hasten the return of the Imam of Time and count us among his true servants, among his true supporters, 
and all those who receive shahadat in his service. From the sponsors of iftar, may Allah accept the qabool and hasan, and to us give opportunities to serve in the best way. All those who have passed away, may Allah elevate their ranks. All those who are ill and ailing, all those who have hopes from these majalis, their hopes be met and their shifa also be granted. So, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Nabi Allah. Assalamu alaikum ya Khaira Khalqillah. Assalamu alaikum wa ala ahli baytikum al tayyibin al tayyibin. Assalamu alaikum ya Sahib al Zaman. Assalamu alaikum ya Sharik al Quran. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam al Insim al Jahan. Jalallahu ta'ala barajat Wa sahralallahu ta'ala makhrajat wa zahirat Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allahumma wa sallallahu wa barakatuh Excuse me myself For every other thing you find a reward Allah says if you do that act You will be rewarded so many hajjs, so many umrahs If you do that act you will be blessed with the heaven. If you perform that act, that is the reward. But when it comes to fast, he says that it is for me and the reward is me, myself. And it is up to me how I reward and how I pay back the servant who has fasted sincerely for me. Now, coming back to his khutbah, the Holy Prophet, he says that, Ayyuhannas, inna anfusakum marhunatum bi'a'malikum So coming back to this khutbah, and that is why we find amazing riwayat with reference to this holy month of Ramadan when Allah says that As-Sawmuli wa ana jaza'uhu That is, fast is for me, and the reward of that fast is for me. Yesterday we talked about the khutbah of the Holy Prophet, which was delivered by him on the last Friday of the month of Shaban, and part of it will be recited today. Before we come to that, there is a hadith from the says that fasts that we observe, it is a worship, which is a hidden act, a hidden act which is between the Creator, the Lord, and the creation, that is, the person who is fasting. So an act which is between Allah 
and his servant. And unlike every other action that can be seen, none but Allah can see this fast of ours. 